My Lords, I have signed Amendment 8, and uh, I do support the others in this group. I congratulate the noble lady, Baroness Jones of Whitchurch, on uh, not just an excellent introductory speech, very clear, but also a, a relatively simple, clear amendment in Amendment 8. And it's obvious, I think, to everybody, is it not, that we need to reduce the volume of non-essential plastic single-use products. I mean, more than just plastic, but plastic predominantly. Uh, plastic's the most incredible material. Um, I mean, I, I couldn't function without it, but uh, during, before lockdown, my partner and I had reduced our disposable single-use plastic to virtually nothing. COVID put a hole in that because so much food is wrapped up and there wasn't much choice. But now we do have a choice. And I think it's obvious to everybody, we have to encourage a policy environment which diverts food manufacturers and retailers towards other, uh, for example, compostable materials for food contact packaging instead of plastics. Of course, we have to make sure that we can compost those materials easily and not just by some special arrangement with local authorities. The organisation Plastic Planet is a global solutions organisation and it has the single goal of inspiring the world to turn off the plastic tap by working with politicians, the UN, scientists and industry to convey the importance of the situation and to take action in reducing the use of plastic. And they have created several schemes. Uh, our government could just pick up many of those schemes and uh, a ready-made, oven-ready scheme uh, that they could use immediately. Um, according to 2020 figures from RAP, flexible plastics represents a quarter of all UK consumer packaging. And plastic packaging is actually 40% of all global plastic production. It, it is a problem. Only 4% of that consumer plastic packaging is currently recycled. The rest ends up in landfill or incineration, contamin contaminating other waste streams, such as food waste, or worse, in our oceans and um, natural habitats where wildlife is threatened. And it's not just threatened by contamination, but also threatened by um, uh, uh, direct injury. We've all seen photographs of um, animals tied up in fish birds tied up in plastic and, and dying. As RAP acknowledges on its roadmap, urgent action is required to address the complex challenges that underpin this. Poor design, collection infrastructure, inconsistent communications, sorting challenges, reprocessing technology, capacity, and unstable end markets. And uh, the government's uh, claim to be a leader in tackling plastic pollution, but Greenpeace pointed out that they're actually fueling the plastic crisis. The UK is the biggest contributor to, the, to this waste production behind the USA. And what we do is force our waste on other countries. Now, some have refused, but apparently 40% of our plastic waste is sent to Turkey, where, of course, it's giving, producing serious health problems for the people in the surrounding areas, such as respiratory issues, nosebleeds, headaches. So the government isn't just fueling nature emergency, they're also fueling health crises as well, and you have to take responsibility for that. Now, the Green Party has a long-term policy, its aim being to have no more than 20% residual waste and to recycle and compost more than 80% also to have the costs of disposal charged to all district councils in direct relation to the quantity of waste collected for disposal by each district. So this provides incentive to the district councils to promote waste reduction and to increase recycling as they will save directly on disposable costs. Now I hesitate to put um, more pressure on councils because they're already incredibly cashed, cash strapped it's getting very late for me. I'm just, you know, it's 50 minutes past my bedtime. Um, the, um, they're already um, um, deprived of funds by this government, and so uh, they would have to be funded to do this.